Exodus chapter number 14. Uh, if we know anything about the Bible, just a little bit, uh, uh, set the stage here just a little. Uh, we know this point we've gotten to. We know that Israel has been in Egypt. Uh, we've seen the plagues come and go. And now we know that uh, Moses has led the people um, out of Egypt. And now we're going to get to where we're going to start reading in verse number 10 in Exodus chapter 14. They've now come to the Red Sea. And we get to verse number 10, and the Bible says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us, with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for your word. Lord, we thank you for your sin, for the singing, Lord. And Lord, we're just thankful to be in your house tonight. Lord, I ask you to be with what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, help me to give it to your people tonight the way you gave it to me. Uh, Lord, help each and everything that's said and done just be an encouragement to each and every one of us. Lord, help us uh, tonight just uh, to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing we'll look at is we see at the beginning of this here in verses 10 through 12, uh, we pretty much just see the complaining that Israel was doing. And we know as we, we read, we won't read all three of them again, uh, Pharaoh's drawn nigh, now the Egyptians uh, uh, go up to Moses and say, because there was no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness, just automatically starting to complain. And we know that if we look and we could go through and read their whole time that they're in the wilderness, how they see time after time after time God do something and they immediately begin to complain I mean you, you think about this situation right here how they've seen all the plagues that have came brother Phil they've seen everything that's happened they've seen how God has uh, began to lead them out of Egypt and yet here they are now coming to the Red Sea and the first thing they want to do is again start to complain uh, you know, there's so many times that we have so many blessings and so many things that go right in our life, and at the first little uh, road bump or speed bump or whatever you may call it, uh, we begin to complain. Uh, God, why is this happening to me? Why does I got to go through this? Why is this got to happen to us? Uh, you know, I even text somebody tonight that texted me. They had somebody else that had tested positive, and they was uh, not going to be able to be here tonight. And I said, well, it just seems sometimes like when it rains, it pours. It just seems like it always, if anything can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. That's just called life sometimes. Sometimes we just got to accept it uh, and get up and go on, so to speak. But we see the complaining that they had in verses 10 through 12. We want to see the command in verse number 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Is that not what we should be able to get out of each each time that we come into the house of God? The pastor stands up and preaches, and I, to me it doesn't matter. It can be a salvation message, and you could have been saved 40 years. We should still get something out of that if we've come looking for something, that we can get help out of that as we go and, and battle this world on a, a weekly basis. And that's what Moses tells these people. that We see the command uh, that he gives them, but we see the conquest. Think about this that he tells them. For the Egyptians whom you seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Sure. You know something, that, and, and this isn't in my notes. I actually, I've sat and studied this. I've read over this. Uh, one of the advantages of my job is, is Brother Donald, is I pretty much kind of work by myself. So you go, like I have preached this 17 times to myself today. You know, so there, there's nothing I thought, and never dawned on me till now. Think of the faith that Moses had. The Lord hasn't told him yet what's going to happen. He don't tell him here till we get down in verse number 16. He tells him, lift up thy rod. But Moses had the faith, that if you will just stand still and watch what God's going to do for you, right. these people that you see chasing you today, you're not ever going to see them again. Yeah, They're going to be gone forever is what's about that. And we see the conquest, but we see the charge in verse number 15. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Now we've often heard Brother Doug say it, we've often heard other people say, there is no standing still with God. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. And with God's help, that's what I want to preach on tonight. Stop backing up. Stop going backwards with some things that I'm going to touch on just a little bit tonight. The first thing we need to stop backing up on is stop backing up on our sanity. What do you mean our sanity, Brother Josh? Can you not just watch a little bit of the news, Brother Charlie, and just understand that it will drive you crazy? Because what happens? Too many times we get consumed with the things of this world. It's not a matter of just watching the news and watching things that are just going on, but it, we just become consumed with it. It just wraps ourselves around. If you read my devotion, I believe it was the one I did on Monday, that happened to me a little bit last week. I started watching and following along, and, the, and they're talking about all this stuff that's going on in, some cre in the Supreme Court. Slow down. Whew. And it just began to just irritate me, Brother Donald, the more I seem like, how can these people lie, just blatantly lie, and nobody is willing to call them out. We just become consumed to those things. I was thinking about, uh, you know, this, I was thinking as I talked about, you know, preaching this to myself at work time after time, Brother Thad, and I got to thinking about, you know, it, it's been, I believe it was 21 years ago this February. I, I wasn't quite here at Emmanuel yet. Uh, I remember going to church down where Tina grew up in Pleasant View, and I remember watching that Daytona 500 that day. And watching that, that wreck happens, Brother James, right before we go in, right before we leave for church. And that was, for some of y'all, here, this is something interesting. I, I, I learned this this week. It's a little, little side note here, okay? We didn't have cell phones that have all the internet like you all always have it on. Do you realize that this December, this upcoming December, 30 years ago, the first text message was sent? See, some of you kids and some young people don't realize when we first got phones, y'all remember this, you got like 15 text messages and 50 minutes a month. That was all you got. So this was before cell phones. I didn't know what happened. I just knew there was a wreck and you thought everything was going to be okay. And I'll never forget the last thing I heard Brother James walking out of the house was when Daryl Walter looked back and he goes, I guess Dale's okay. Dale's okay, right? I go to church, come out of church, flip on the radio and find out Dale Earnhardt died. I didn't know Dale Earnhardt from the man in the moon. But I liked him. Now I'm sitting there and just, just, just almost just tears well up in my eyes. I could tell you where I was at, Brother James, when Rick Pitino announced he was leaving UK. Because at that point in time, that kind of thing consumed me. We're just consumed with that stuff. We can become consumed with our, our sports or our hobbies and all these things. And, when, and it, just, it can drive us insane, Brother Ray. And you sit down and try to watch and your team don't win. Or, or you got Dr. Fauci on TV again talking about this or that. And we got to quarantine for five days or ten days or take four shots or six shots. It will drive you insane. Right. The Bible tells us how to keep from backing up on our sanity. Oh. Philippians chapter 4, and verse number 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever yeah. things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, yeah. whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Right. See, our problem is, is the devil too many times plays on our idle mind. We get to work, we get to where we're driving, and the devil just gets in our head and, and puts these thoughts in our head, and we just begin to think and go through things and become madder and madder and madder as we stand there, as we go through these things. It'll drive us insane. Psalms chapter 18 and verse 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler, a buckler to all those that trust in Him. In Psalms chapter 25 and verse number 2, O oh my God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. See, our problem is too many times when we allow the devil to get into our head, that's we are allowing our enemies to triumph over us, Brother Phil. We allow that thing to get in our mind and it will just drive us insane, the stuff that's going on. We just uh, we heard it sung about. I uh, said it at the beginning. We look at the world and think we have no idea how they can make it without God. We have him. If you've trusted in him tonight, it, we have every. He, he lives and dwells inside of us, Brother Donald, but yet we won't take advantage of it. We get so worried and consumed about things that are going on, and it will flat out drive us insane. Stop backing up on our sanity. The second thing, we need to stop backing up on our supplication. Think about the fact of what Brother uh, uh, Mike shared this uh, on Sunday. Now think about it. He talked about that lady 
that said that she was, she was going home and told her husband, I'm going in here to pray and I'm not coming out until you get saved. And I can't remember now how many hours he said, 24, 36 hours. It was a long time. Whatever it was, it was a long time, Brother Phil. And I've said this before, when we get to the end of the service and we give an invitation and God's laid it on your heart to come up here and pray for somebody, and, and I, I, am, I, will, I will stand up here. If I'm the one that's up here, I will watch. And if everybody's done, you know, I try to just, God, you tell me when it needs to stop. Somebody could be right here praying. If God says, shut it down, we should shut it down. Too many times, as soon as that happens, Brother Donald, if we're on the altar praying, we immediately get up. Well, he, he stopped singing. We got to get up and go. Why? Did God tell you to get up then? Well, the music stopped. It's time to get up. This lady stayed and prayed for 24, I don't remember how long he said, all this time for her husband, we are not willing to stay a whole afternoon. We're not willing to spend just a little more time. Why have we backed up on supplication for others? Why have we backed up on taking others to the Lord and say, God, I'm just, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray. If it takes me to pray and all night tonight, you know what, I'm just going to be tired at work tomorrow. But I'm going to pray for my coworker, or my friend, or whatever it may be. But too many times we allow the, out, the world have an influence on us. Daniel, we know that they have went to the king and, and had him sign a decree that anybody's caught praying, this is what's going to happen. Right. We're going to throw them in the lion's den. In Daniel chapter number 6 and verse 11, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Daniel knew. We could go back and we could read just a little bit before that. Daniel knew that decree had been signed. He knew everything that was going on and still that didn't stop him. Why too many times are we willing to stop praying for our loved one? Whether it be for salvation, whether it be for something else, too many times we are quick and we get that, that burden for somebody and we have that burden and we're just all about praying for it and then we don't see an answer for a week or a month or six months and all of a sudden we just, we just we let it go. We just don't pray with that same fire and intensity that we did at some point. We just start backing up on it. Well, I'll just, you know... I'm. I don't want to raise my hand today and make it a big deal, or I'm not going to pray today. I can skip this week, and we just slowly but surely stop, start backing up. No, keep going forward with it. Keep just pushing forward with it. It's not time now to back up. We can look at what's going on in this world and know how close it is to Christ coming back that this is not the time to back up on making supplication for others and our loved ones. The third thing, I'm going to try to take a drink to slow down. We're going to get done really quick. I say that all the time, right? We need to stop backing up on making a stand. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. The three... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had an opportunity to back up. King asked them a second time, this is what we're going to do, you're going to bow to me, or I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. They had an opportunity. David went down and, and went down to fight Goliath. He had an opportunity to back up. I mean, when, when, when Saul put all of his armor on him, and, it was, and David said, I've not proved this, and took it off, brother Ray, he could have said, I don't have armor, I'm going to... We'll just we'll, we'll, we'll let Goliath continue to do whatever he's going to do, Brother Phil. We just read about Daniel. Daniel could have backed up. He could have shut the windows and just went and prayed silently along his, his bed or in his chamber, whatever it may be, and not let anybody know that he was going to make that prayer and supplication. Amen. We have multiple accounts in the Bible, those that were willing to make a stand. What about us? What kind of stand are we willing to make? You know, I was talking to somebody before church, and if, if you follow a little bit about what's going on, people are starting to wake up a little bit more and realize some of the stuff that's happening and willing a little bit to make a stand. And in Congress, they had this whole filibuster thing going on, wanting to pass these whole voting laws and all this stuff and whatever they're trying to push through. There was a senator today, that Brother Donald, that stood up and gave a whole speech of why we couldn't stop the filibuster. He got to the end of the speech and said, this was Chuck Schumer's speech from years ago. The very one that today is trying to get it pushed through gave a speech a few years ago on why we can't stop it. Just willing to make a stand. Right. And see, so many times we, we get into our mind, I, I, can't, I can't make a difference. I, 
I'm just an old redneck from northern Kentucky. Brother Donald, ain't nobody going to listen to me. Let me just throw this out there. That, that's part of what January 6th was about. Just a whole bunch of rednecks want to let their voices be heard and then take our country back. But even when it comes to the things of God, we're not willing to make a stand. I usually don't watch a whole lot of TV. Um, there are a few shows that I really like, and we're sitting down and we're watching TV the other night. And uh, most of the time we watch stuff, Tina, it's, you know, she's recorded a Hallmark movie or it's something else we try to watch and fast forward through the commercials. She, we were watching something the other night and it got to the end of it and this commercial came on. It was a Hilton commercial. Hopefully nobody else has seen this, maybe but me. They was talking about how wonderful it was to be at the Hilton, Brother Ray. And just the, the comfort you could have and just how wonderful it was and the bed and everything was just great. And it was two guys carrying in their kid. Exactly. That was my, that was one of my thoughts, Brother Phil. Ooh, gross. Why do they push that stuff? It's such a small amount of our, uh, of our population that believes in that stuff because we're not willing to make a stand. We're not willing to make a stand. I've heard all kinds of people that want to boycott Chick-fil-A because they don't believe in this or that. I would hear all kinds of stuff about boycotting Hobby Lobby or any of these other things that want to stand on uh, God uh, principles and, and stand on their faith. But I hardly ever hear Christians come out and say, you know what, we're just going to boycott Hilton because if this is the kind of junk they're going to put on, we're done with it. Why? We're not willing to make a stand. We're not willing to just to stand up for what is right. We're not willing to stand up for these certain things. I, look, I, I, I'm not trying to be mean or rude, but you, you see so many of these kids and things that go on today and, and, and they can't go to church on Sunday because of this and they can't go to church on Wednesday because of this. And, you know, Caitlin would have golf tournaments at times and if you wanted to sign her up for ones, it had to be on a weekend and, and, and all these things. Why? Because at some point in time, we quit making a stand. These things used to not be on Wednesdays and Sundays. But at some point in time, Christians quit being willing to make a stand. It's like, no, we're not going to have that on these days. It's not going to happen. It's just not. And if we had made a stand then, we might not be in the situation we are now. We have nothing in the Bible that tells us that, God's, that Jesus is coming back tomorrow. So things are going to continually get worse if we're not willing to make a stand on some things. Willing to stand up for what is right. Not only do we need to quit going back about making a stand and quit going back on supplication and quit backing up on our sanity. We need to stop backing up on some of the simple things. Missing church. Boy, nobody's going to like me after this. Brother Donald, will you help me come out of here tonight? Because this might... <laughs> I'm not talking about if you're on vacation. And like I said, I had plenty of text messages today, people that are sick. As, as Brother Doug has alluded to, if you got the gang and you got COVID, stay home. But too many times it just becomes easy to make an excuse. Well, I, I got up today and I just, I just don't feel good, so I'm just going to stay home. You, wouldn't stay, you know, we've said we wouldn't stay home from work. We wouldn't stay home from school. We wouldn't stay home from a whole lot of things that we'll stay home from church for. Or this, this person's coming over. Or that person's coming over. And we'll just, it's so easy for us to come up with an excuse to miss church. Right. You know, I've often wondered, what if God treated us the same way we treated him sometimes? What if he just said, you know what, I'm just too busy today, Brother Charlie. You're on your own, buddy. That guardian angel is going to protect you from that wreck that's ten, that, that happened 10 seconds before you got there today. That just might now today be you. See, we, we just so easy just back up on missing church. We just, I, you know, to me, this is, love, I, I thought about this all week, so I'll, I'll share it. We first got married, we we would get up and the one morning the day that we actually always had together was Sunday we would get up every Sunday morning brother Phil and we did the same thing every Sunday we would get up and we would make those Pillsbury cinnamon rolls it, just side note who, who can I pick on side note let's, let's see who, brother Peter you know when we first got married though, there's eight of those in a pack she, eight of, I would eat five and she'd eat three <laughs> Now, if I look at them, I gain two pounds. If I eat two of them, I gain five. It's crazy how things change. But that's what we would eat, Brother Donald. But every Sunday morning, we would sit there and we would eat. And I'd start getting a headache. Man, why do I have... It's like, it's like every Sunday I'm getting a headache. The devil's not going to keep me out of church. Why am I getting... Well, I realized it was, I'm addicted to caffeine. 
I would have a Diet Mountain Dew or Mountain Dew every other day of the week was the first thing when I got out of bed, but on Sundays I didn't have that. So I finally got to where I'd have a drink of Mountain Dew with my cinnamon rolls, and I felt good. Then it was all right. But that's how we are. We'll get up on sun, we'll get up on Monday and we don't feel good and we're tired. It's like, ah, stupid alarm. Gotta go to work. We get up on Sunday and we don't feel good, and the alarm goes off, and we hit snooze, and we hit snooze, and we hit snooze, and we hit snooze, and we're either running in here later, we get up and we send the pastor a text. I just don't feel good today, Pastor. I'm just I'm gonna stay home. Now look, if you're sick, stay home. But if you don't feel good, there's a difference. Why are we backing up on simple things like missing church? Why are we backing up on the simple things like just studying? Now, I'm talking about reading. I'm talking about studying. Yeah. Brother Mike taught it in Sunday school this past Sunday about knowing him. If we want to know him, we've got to spend time with him. And that's talking also about being in his word, right. studying his scriptures, studying those things that it can help us. That when we go out, it can help fight us going insane with the nonsense that's going on in this world. But too many times we just think, ah, I'll read my nice little uh, devotion, which I'm thankful for all those that read the devotions, but we'll read our devotion for the day, and we'll read our three verses, and go on about our day and think we've done something wonderful and grand. Not only just missing church or studying, but what about backing up on sin? Why do we see that nonsense on the TV? Because we just accept it. We become, we become accepted of it. You see, you know, I, I remember just in the time of me growing up, you wouldn't dream of seeing people shacking up together. Now, Amen. you know, might as well do it and just find out if we like each other before we ever get married. You wouldn't dream some of the things that you see, even just in my lifetime. You know, I remember you, you didn't dare hardly see certain things or hear certain things on uh, the TV or something like that. Now it just goes right through like it's no big deal. Amen. Why? Because we've just backed up on sin. We just look at it like, ah, eh, it's just, it, it is what it is. And we just, we've become so acceptant of everything that goes on. It's just, ah, eh, that's just the world. That's just, that's just how they are. We can't expect them to change. And we've backed up and taken a back seat to the devil and the world and allowed them to take over on even just the simple things. Let me say this lastly. I told you I was going to make somebody mad. She even started crying. We need to stop backing up on the scriptures. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Pretty simple question. What's it mean to you? What's it mean to you? What does the scripture truly mean to you? If somebody was to come and try to take your Bible today, would you care? Now you might say, oh, absolutely, I don't, I don't want anybody to take my Bible. No, would you really care? Would you miss it? You get up and you, 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 you get up today, you, you get up tonight and and, you know, Brother Josh preached, so we, we got out a little bit early, so, boy, I can get home and I can be in bed by 8.30 tonight. And you get home, how long is it going to take before you realize you left your Bible laying here on the pew? Would you realize it first thing in the morning when you got up? Would it take till Wednesday, or, or this is Wednesday, would it take till Sunday when you got ready to come back to church? Where's my Bible at? Oh, you know what? I bet I left that at church on Sunday. Yeah. Now, if you're like, Brother Doug talks about, and if you're like me, you're blessed, and God, you, you have a dozen. But sometimes there's just that one that means something to you. You know, I have a couple that I like to read out of. But if you give me my choice, this is the one that I'm going to want. Not only is it the one that I typically preach out of, It is. <laughs> Brother Donald seen it. See, he gave me that. And wrote a note in there. Our pastor gave me that. See, our scripture should mean the world to us. Sure. Our Bible should mean the world to us. It should irritate us to no end when they want to take and they want to change it. And there's so many different things. I'll try to find podcasts and you try to listen to and you'll think, hey, this is good. And the next thing you know, they're opening up and they're reading. You're like, man, what? <sighs> 
You ruined it for me. You read from some other kind of nonsense that don't even make sense. And you got to turn it off. Some of those things, you know, they might have something good to say, and then some things I just can't get past. What is our what is our what does the scripture truly mean to us? See, too many times we just we we've backed up on scripture. And all that encompasses everything that I've said so far. See, we have things that the Bible doesn't it didn't tell us in 2 Timothy, most of it, or some of the scripture. It says all is given by the inspiration of God, in which that means all of it is profitable for doctrine. All of it is profitable for reproof. All of it's profitable for correction. All of it is profitable for instruction in righteousness. All of it is perfect. But what does it mean to us? See, we've backed up, we, we just continually backed up, I, I, you know, how much time, we, we talked already a little bit about studying it. How much time do we really spend in it? How much does it mean to us? How much does it truly, truly mean to us? That if, if somebody was to come and take it today, would we miss it? You know, I think last year, you know, I, I have said this before in preaching that, you know, what would we think if we came in and the, and the doors were locked and, and everybody laughed and everybody kind of went on? Well, then last year it kind of happened. Right. Last year kind of happened. Might not have been a padlock on it, but we wasn't allowed to come in. And they, they want to do that again, and you still see so many churches that are just so quick to close that never would have dreamt of closing, and, and they're so quick to close for everything now. How much longer do you think it takes before they do what Texas, that lady in Texas tried to do sometime, and they start making this book that Brother Doug has alluded to before about making it a hate crime? Right. See, it's very easy for all of us to sit here and think, that's not going to happen in our country. Well, we also never thought they would close the churches down like they did last year. We never thought that they would get to the point where people just automatically believe everything that they see on TV like you see now. Right. What does our scripture truly mean to us? If, we don't, if we're not careful and we don't stop backing up on the Scripture, we don't stop backing up applying it to our lives, and we don't stop backing up, uh, stop backing up on studying it and putting it out there and getting it out to a lost and dying world, we might just find it's gone. Now, I know God's Word, it's always going to be there. I understand that. But we have no idea what our country is going to be faced with. What does our Scriptures truly mean to us? So there was a time when you would see uh, 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 people that you just, you wouldn't, you know, you could take the Bible to school and you could do certain things. You know, we, pretty sure you probably still can now. They're not going to stop you. They might not like it, but they can't stop you from taking it to school. They can't stop you from reading it at work. But so many times, and look, I, look, I'm preaching to myself, okay? Got my notes, got everything right there on my iPad. It's a whole lot easier to deal with this, Brother Donald, you know why? I don't have it in my pocket. I put it in here. Because it's very easy at work just to have this. And I would say most of you in here, uh, besides Brother Ray, Brother Ray's probably still got a flip phone. But I don't know, Brother Ray and Brother Phil both might. I'm not sure. And you have the app. Now, I know he's got an iPhone because it's blue when it's texting. So is Brother Ray's. I made fun of both of them. And I, got, I can't. But it's easy just to have that Bible app right there on a the phone. We just pick it up and we read it. There's nothing wrong. That's wonderful. I do it. I'll, I'll, pl I'll play it at work. I can open it up and sit and play it and listen to it at work in my headphones. What difference would it make if we got back just taking this and sat down at work at the lunch table? Just open up our Bible. Let people see what we're doing. Instead of thinking we're sitting there flipping through Facebook or sitting there flipping through the ESPN or something like that, we're sitting there reading the Word of God. We need to stop backing up on the Scriptures. We have a book full of people who are willing to make a stand, of people who are willing to not back up on the things of God. We have people out there. You know, I was joking with, uh, um, I was joking with Brother uh, Donald talking about the church, talking about the Catholic Church and, and that beforehand and, and talking about some things the Catholic Church. You know what? We can, we can throw off and all these other religions and all these other things and some things they do, but you know what they don't do, Brother Clint? You don't see them backing down. You don't see them backing down from their beliefs. They can be wrong the way we think, the way we believe. They won't back down. Well, them Jehovah Witnesses, they're quick to be out there and knock on your door to try to get your stuff. What about us? You got that whole left side, boy, they're willing to not back down. 
They're willing to stand up for what they think is right. And then here we are. Yeah, okay, just, just leave me alone. Let me go to church. Let me get my, you know, hour and a half, two hours on Sunday morning, my hour on Sunday night, my hour on Wednesday night. Just, you just, just stay out of my business and let me alone and you do your thing. And it's just, it's just one little small step back, Brother Phil. And then we just, we just continue to step back and continue to step back. You know, I kept debating on when I was preaching this through my head, and that right there just came into, it came into my mind. Uh, uh, you know, I was going to get somebody up here, and if you think about that, that loud person that gets in your face, Brother Donald, at work, and they might be yelling at you or talking to you, we, we just continue to back up, and that's how we are. Yeah. We're not willing to get loud back. What is it, that old saying, the squeaky wheel gets the grease or something like that? We're not willing to be that squeaky wheel. We'd rather just say, just, just leave me alone. Just if you let me go to my church two or three hours a week, I'm good. And it's led us in the shape we're in today because we're not willing to go forward. They could have backed up. They, he, could have, he could have taken his rod out and he could have split the Red Sea and they could have said, you know what? That, I could get in the middle of that and that water could fall in on me, Brother Peter. I, I, just, I don't know that I trust that. That would be pretty scary. I'll, I'll be honest. That would be pretty scary, Brother Phil. Imagine that. you got the sea going back. And I, just, I mean, can you imagine it be like almost like an aquarium, I guess? The, the fish swim up and look at it and you're like, that would be kind of nervous, Brother James. That's how we are. We look at the world out there almost like they would. You, we could think and use your imagination, look at the Red Sea thing. Well, it's pretty scary out there. I think I'll just, I'll just, I'll stay over here. You all just, you don't, don't bother me. I'll just stay over here and do my thing. And we've continually backed up and continually backed up and continually backed up. And they've just slowly filled it in with all their nonsense. And now we're to the point where like, oh, what are we going to do? Go forward. Just keep going forward. Amen. Stop backing up. Brother Clint, come get your guitar, pick out a song, and just play it. I'll invite you to come. Maybe you need to come to the altar and pray and just ask God to help you go forward going forward means we've got to stop backing up to the things that this world is trying to push and instead get behind our scripture get behind God and allow the world to hear us for a change our grace heavenly father Lord we do thank you for this day Lord I thank you for the message you've laid upon my heart Lord Lord I thank you for your people that were here tonight Lord we thank you for those Lord we pray for those that couldn't be here those that are sick Lord we ask you just continue to help them and touch them Lord Lord, we just ask you to just deal with hearts now, Lord. Just help us, Lord. Be willing to make a stand, to just stop backing up on those things that we know to be true. Lord, to help us to go out and be a lighthouse, not only to this, uh, just starting even just in our own community, Lord, to spread across our country, Lord, that we may see revival break out and spread across this land, Lord, and see a movement like we've never seen before. Lord, and ask you to be with the hearts during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.